Alan, how are you? Hello. Hello, baby. <laughs> hey. Yeah, Long time no see. Yeah. Um, I saw you were talking, so I had to make time. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Hey, Hello. Hey, Alan. Hey, Bailey. How's it going? Hey, David. I forgot your cat's name, but hi, your cat. It's <laughs> Just hanging out. Always, always here to give, uh, give support. How's everybody doing today? Okay. Excellent, excellent. Hello. Hi. Hi, Angel. So, anybody going to WasmCon? Yes, <laughs> I am. Yeah, I am. Oh. Yeah. Yay! Yeah, uh, I can't great. wait to see so many, so many faces. Anybody joining SeaWorldCon at the same time in London? Okay. <laughs> At least I know that, that's, that's a long trip for uh, for me. <laughs> All right, let's give it to probably about uh, five after uh, for folks to. Uh, kind of mosey on in. Um, anybody interested in leading the meeting today? No takers. Anyone? Come on, I did it uh, last week. I can, yeah, I can, I can help with the, with the notes. You want to? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I yeah, I was looking at that, but I didn't see them in the document. Maybe I was not checking the right one. Uh, what were you looking for? Okay, now I see that. Okay, yeah, I will take care. That's
Um, I don't have edit permissions directly on the document. Not sure if you can give me those permissions just to avoid like having a lot of suggestions for notes. Let me see what I can do. Yeah. Why don't we uh, get started? Wanna kick us off? Uh, would you like to kick off the meeting? Uh, did, did you uh, did you uh, mention my, my name? Oh no, uh, Alan. Uh, yeah. I was uh, Angel on here. Uh, yeah. Is it? <laughs> yeah, Angel, it's on uh, Angel. Okay. Okay. It's on so, yeah. <laughs> sorry, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't sure. Okay. Uh, would you like to kick us off today? Yeah. Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, so welcome everyone for a new WASAN working group uh, meeting. Um, I think it's amazing that the community continues growing and we have more and more projects and more and more things to check uh, today. So um, I think one of the first thing that we do, uh, usually if anyone that is new to the WASAN working groups could like to make an introduction, that would be really nice. So everyone knows a bit more about you. I don't know if anyone wants to start with an introduction. Okay, so uh, I think we can start directly with the with the topics. So the first thing that we have for today is an introduction from Alan Pung. Is that correctly the pronunciation? Yes, yes. Okay. Alan, thank you. Alan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Today, Alan is going to present about Wasan Mock Server, which is a, some, a project as a sandbox proposal for the for uh, CNCF. So, it's it's your turn. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, allow me to share my screen. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. So. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, my name is Alan. Uh, so last year I was invited in uh, Cloud Native Wasm Day as a speaker. So um, I was I did some games with the Wasm Cloud, uh, and um, I'm a very big fan of WebAssembly. So today my topic is uh, WebAssembly mock server, which covers uh, HTTP, uh, HTTPS, TCP, WebSocket, and my TM tool. So uh, what is MITM? Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, what is this web Wasm mod server? This is the diagram. So basically, uh, I'm claiming to be the first uh, person who does uh, this MITM uh, testing with automation uh, using WebAssembly. Yeah, so what is MITM? 
Uh, so uh, basically, we have this person, Alice and Bob. So uh, at Bob sends a message and uh, this person, Chuck, actually intercepts the message and send the message to Alice. So this is, uh, we call it man in the middle. Uh, and this is actually a very common testing tool for software testing. So uh, I'm not sure whether you heard about Charles Proxy uh, and some other mod server also does this uh, functionality. So some of the things uh, we have uh, mod rules uh, for the currently what um, uh, we, they have is uh, breakpoints or string replacement modification through code. So uh, using WebAssembly, uh, why use a WebAssembly? Because uh, WebAssembly can be compiled from many different programming languages. And uh, yeah, you think about sending APIs, uh, sending JSONs, uh, but if you send uh, WebAssembly, is, it can contain much more information than JSON. So uh, Lamentum is just a better JSON. Yeah, so uh, in WebAssembly, you also can import uh, standard libraries like uh, Crystal.io and uh, uh, my mod server also support automation. Yeah, so uh, I'll just do a demo. Uh, yeah, so I I just did a, um, uh, yeah, what, what you see on the left is, uh, basically there are three things that I'll cover today is uh, mock, mocking, modifying the HTTP request, replayer, and uh, automation. So uh, over here I have is a uh, playground, uh, and a user can write in a Rust code, okay? Um, and the mock server, you do have to, this is just a playground. So here you can see is uh, there's some macro uh, to modify this HTTP request, uh, the path t.json. And uh, you can see there's a uh, there's very nice uh, Rust language server running at the background in the browser, which also using WebAssembly. So uh, yeah, uh, you can actually see. Uh, yeah, so basically here's the example that um, the path is t.json, it will you know, send, send it somewhere else. Uh, when the response comes back, t.json will return um, data.high. So let's just compile it. Uh, on the right here, you will see the compilation. Um, how it's running, okay. Yeah, then we connect to the virtual browser. Yeah, so what we see here is uh, uh, a browser in a browser. So uh, it, it, uh, to do the MITM, so you can go to uh, yahoo.com. So it loads uh, perfectly like a normal page, but if you put says JSON, uh, wait, sorry, something is wrong. Wait, wait, wait sorry, I have not um, sent the web assembly to my mock server yet. So now you'll see uh, t.json. Yeah, it's this. Yeah, so uh, for people to, and basically the browser, uh, if software tester will actually test how the website reacts with a different variation of the, the, the band data. Uh, so there are some age testing if the, if the field is empty or uh, common cases is if the string is too long and, uh, and it should be truncated in order to display properly. So all this is quite essential. Uh, yeah, so that's the module for the mock. How about the replayer? Replayer is something similar. So we have is uh, additional of this uh, HTTP replayer. You can see here there's this uh, macro that does a assertion uh, comparing the response from A and compare with response B. So what it does is uh, basically here modify uh, HTTP request is like a Charles proxy's map remote, uh, mapping the traffic to somewhere else. And let's just uh, compile it and see how is it. Okay. All right, so we can uh, actually go to this, this, this page and see what it shows on the browser. Okay, this is a bit hard for me to, oops, sorry. Let me move this, okay. Uh, let me just, yeah. Basically it's showing uh, site A, so here is the site A. So now we do a, a map remote transfer the, the traffic to another web, another web page. So the first one is Moonlit, the other one is Steady. 
So did we just send? We just uh, we have not sent the web assembly. Yeah. Okay. It will take. Uh. Basically. Uh. uh I set it to thirty seconds. Uh. In the future, I might have some. Uh. You know. Uh. For 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 simplicity, I I just uh set it at thirty seconds so you can go to here, and uh yeah just go to base electron. Yeah, so you actually see is site B, whereas uh, here it says site A. Yeah, so basically I, I transfer the traffic uh, from one end to another end. So here there's this report link button. So you can see this is a, 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 a HTML report. I'm so sorry about the color being a bit uh, yellowish. Yeah, so uh, yeah, basically uh, there's this t.json. So imagine if your website, you have a lot of things to do regression. Uh, yeah, this report will actually shows all the, all the, all the traffic that you actually did a map remote. Yeah, so you can see uh, the assertion uh, failed because uh, the site A uh, returning uh, data is site A, but uh, it goes to another one, it returns uh, site B as a string. Yeah, so. Okay, then uh, that's the replayer, which I believe is very useful. Uh, and the other one is the automation. Yeah, so um, basically what is here is, you know, if people write, um, yeah, basically this one is uh, to actually do a HTTP call for get requests to a mock bin. And this is the path. And, uh, and we will just check if the data is it. Um, uh, high, right? So we just uh, compile it again. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me just send the assembly. And yeah, that's a report link. Let's just see the report link. Yeah. So basically, uh, the mock bin actually is returning. Uh, Z, 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 data is Z, 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 but your assertion is uh, to check whether it's high, so it will fail here. Yeah, so actually, uh, there's, there's also um, to support in, uh, integration with other platform, there's this uh, Postman, uh, you generate the Postman uh, API, uh, uh, the, the, the format. So uh, let me just go to Postman and import uh, this. This file and yep, basically, it, yeah, it just shows uh, the, the request that I made. Yeah, so I just, just now I didn't click the, the proper one, but you know, I think you can trust me on that. Uh, yeah, let me just import it again. Yeah, this one, data one, it's, it's the same thing, right? Yeah, then uh, import as copy. How do I do it? Yeah. And uh, let me just, you know, you can send and uh, it's say that, that. So the thing is, uh, why WebAssembly, why mod, WebAssembly mod server is so that, um, uh, yeah, you, you have a lot of capability, like, um, you know, you, you, you do not need to generate uh, Postman, uh, Postman JSON yourself. Uh, the WebAssembly mod server does it for you. So you just write simplicity. Yeah, so, uh, and that's only one part. Uh, uh, so, yeah, there's there's not a lot of tools that support TCP MITM. I think this one is a bit too small. Let me uh, let me make it. Uh, I'll be sure. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, this is a bit small, but uh, let me just make it bigger. Yeah. So basically, there's the. Uh, it, this is an example that it can also uh, MITM TCP in order to build a WebSocket codec. So uh, over here is, uh, yeah, the first example is the it returns hello world. They are, after mocking it, uh, it, it can return uh, another text la, like echo over here. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's quite, um, it's quite, uh, important that these two support HTTP and also TCP. So it's a uh, TCP agnostic. Uh. Yeah, so uh, it's quite good if 
when we have um the yeah different company will have their own you know protocol RPC. Uh, we can actually uh construct construct and handle the TC package uh in a web SMB. So uh and you can still use the same tool. Yeah. So next time you go to other company, you still can use the same uh web mock server. Yeah. So how it works is uh the user can compile WebAssembly and send it to WebAssembly server. You'll get a test report. So the other thing is uh, I've not mentioned is that uh, user2. User2 has this option of connecting to WebAssembly server through WebSocket. And how it works is that uh, there's this dynamic WebAssembly inside the WebAssembly server, which will uh, dynamically uh, construct the modules and uh, register the functions. Uh, such that it can uh, transfer the data, uh, the traffic to the user and uh, establish a web socket connection. Yeah, so actually this is, uh, I'm quite proud of coming out with this is because uh, the code that execute this web assembly is the same code that, as, as, uh, uh, that, that does this. So is I have no, um, yeah, I have, uh, I mean to, to actually, because I initially did this only, but for me to add this is very simple. Yeah, so this is a very good thing about WebAssembly. Yeah, so here's a browser version whereby I did is, uh, yeah, you can, uh, it's, it, you can uh, let people add um, photobuff uh, and then uh, you can do, let them do the photobuff marshalling and stuff like that. And this is a browser. Yeah, so uh, because it's not, it's not uh, reasonable for to compile a web assembly when a user connects to WebSocket. But we can use a static web assembly um, file and then make it make the module like as if uh, the user is send, compiling the web assembly. Uh, yeah, by itself. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, over here, this. Uh, some of the things like as to, that motivates why as to I, I did this. I think I'll just try to do the slideshow. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, firstly, traditional uh, when people write Python uh for automation or GoLang, uh, it can be monolithic and it can be bulky. So you can have a a Automation QA, uh, seven of them, each one writing, you know, contribute committing code to it. So it can be a very uh, difficult thing to manage. And then uh, one person write a test case and it can panic and actually fill all the other test cases. But uh, if you are writing in WebSMD, you can run the each test suit uh, file separately. So what I do is I I I, I write it in a, a in separate files and when I run it I run it in loop. So one fail it will not affect the others. Yeah. So it will not affect other u user. Yeah. So um assertion wise uh okay because currently a lot of time is uh, the test data is usually they have to read from a file. Yeah, because there's no way to put the test data in embed into the file, uh, in the source code, and when you, yeah, it will take it will consume a lot of memory. So usually they will have to read from a JSON file. So the assertion is is can be quite difficult. Uh, but the assertion in a Western base, like we see the idea of macro, uh, is actually uh can be done programmatically. Yeah, and uh, without um. Much complications. Protocol support is uh sometimes they have to write traditionally have to uh in, add the proto files to the repo itself. Uh, but this one is uh where base base is add to the file each file. Yeah, so it actually is uh is quite um yeah if better. So uh, about HTTP and TCP mocking, uh yeah currently the don't a lot of people a lot of testing tool doesn't have the TCP mocking. So utility functions, uh, we we talk about is, uh, the, yeah. So like we when user write HTTP writes the header HTTP header writes the path, 
So we are able to uh, do a lot of things. We are able to generate a Postman uh, JSON for him. We are also able to generate the curl statement from, for him also. So in the future, next time, uh, as the web assembly mod server improves and um, there's more uh, utility that we want to provide, yeah, the user doesn't have to, you know, import a library from us. Yeah, they just use the upgraded uh, Wazen mod server and uh, yeah, the, and the, the upgrading can be done once and for all. Yeah, I think yeah, that's that's pretty much all for my presentation. Yeah, can uh, I'm open for any questions. Yeah. Thank you, Alan, for this great introduction to Wasang um to Wasang mock server. I think it's amazing. Um, I find like super interesting this use case for WebAssembly. Um, I remember in the past checking something around generating graphics based on WebAssembly models. So it seems that it's a good uh, WebAssembly fits really well in the use cases in which you want to make some logic that generating it in a different way could take more or it's even impossible. Um, so there are already some questions on the chat. Um, so Sven, now that you have uh, raised your hand, if you want the, to start with the, with the questions, I will go later. Oh, yes, with the, I, I, with the I chat see ones. the questions. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I can okay. answer the question. So first question is uh, from David, uh, uh, is whether or not I can sh uh, uh, give an advice when do you use a uh, Wesson mod server? or Charles Proxy. Good question. Actually, on my daily work, I, I do use Charles Proxy. Okay. So uh, it's, it's, quite, uh, it's quite convenient uh, of the breakpoint and modifying. I think, but they are using string replacement. So let's say, uh, let's say you want to simulate empty array, then there's no string to, for you to replace. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's one. Uh, another thing is, let's say I test back end. Golang, uh, something like that. So I, I my Golang server makes a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, HTTP calls, right? Uh, and I'm I, I can't break, uh, like you know, and slowly one by one modify the the JSON. Especially I, I would say is let's say um my 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 server actually does a HTTP call to external server and the uh there's an API cost to it. So I want to basically mod everything uh, without leaking my uh, my calls to the original uh, original server. So it yeah, I I just did all this and uh, uh, I can find a, uh, some bugs. Uh, I I use Golang. I use the what you call that Go coverage and one by one, you know, I take the the developer source code and one by one uh, mock the data and so yeah. So uh, I set up. The, my database, I set up my cache and really did it. Yeah, it, it does, it does help. Yeah, in, in this way. Okay. Uh, yeah, I hope they answer your question. Uh, this question is super neat, uh, neat idea. Use resin for this use case. From my perspective, which features are currently missing? Mm. Is there a field where I'm looking for a contributor? Mm. Uh, good question. Uh, I'm looking for basically. I am looking for somebody can uh, you know, help me advocate this idea. Uh, in terms of coding, uh, this one I've been working on this for three years. Yeah, I mean, uh, even since my previous job, uh, I I've been working on it. Um, yeah. In what ways? Uh, I think promoting it. Uh, because I, I can tell you, my 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 code is uh, go length. So it is uh quite quite I I hope I think it's quite manageable. It's like I really can um contributor. Yeah, I think documentation is 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 kind of a good um yeah yeah and uh I I also looking to you know do a cloud service at like, like I said I did a web page, so uh some. Some uh some people help to manage the website. Uh, it, it's quite good. Yeah, I think the background is can be quite good. And uh, yeah, uh, there are some fields, as especially I I believe uh as as we are um yeah there's like we when we I just did a demo right a browser in browser VNC, 
So uh, if you, you if somebody can uh, pull it, you know, uh, like Android emulator stuff like that, uh, it will be good lah. Yeah, because all, all this actually, uh, although you see it looks simple, but uh, a, a normal software tester um to use Charles Proxy, yeah, they you know they have to install certificates on their devices. So uh, I mean, it's gonna take some time for them to figure out how to install. Yeah, especially some Android devices mean uh, certificate. Uh, you have to root the phone, so uh, it's it's quite it's quite troublesome. Yeah, so I hope you know somebody can uh help in that area to make a Android emulator with the SSL cert inside. Uh, yeah, good. So um, okay, yes. Uh, this question is: Do you agree that uh, it's a great use case? Uh, compact module. One of the benefit is uh JSON or YAML is that they are decorative. I Am I planning a way to understand uh, or a way to understand the context or specs in the output of weather module? Uh, okay. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this one actually, yes, I, I, I know like uh, JSON is decorative in, uh, in a way that um, in the postman, you also can write JavaScript uh, things. Uh, yeah, I think, wait, do I have the example? Let me see. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't have the example right now, but uh, there, there's, uh, that there, some people write JavaScript uh, inside, uh, but you know, there's this a lot of things we do not understand, like is NA and oh, oh, then when I see, oh, there's an example, uh, oh, you can actually use the is NA and oh, what about random? What about can I import a um, Node.js module? Uh, what about you know, red expression and what about um, supporting protobuf? Yeah, and uh, some, some, some tools they you know, they don't really you, you have to go and search for their test cases. But for, for Wasm, it's very simple because uh, you can always import uh, modules like, um, uh, yeah, like a, a red expression module, you can import uh, uh, the protobuf post pros I did it, uh, protobuf marshalling, yeah, it's, it's, quite, it's quite good. Uh, yeah, and um, yeah, I, I know uh, people want to be, uh, uh, prefer JSON, it's simple, uh, but let me just share some of my experience. Uh, so usually if you do automation or you do testing, you will um, use Postman to send, a, let's say uh, to post a file, uh, post an image file, okay? So uh, what, what happened for my case is that in Wasm, there's no file system. There's no file system. So basically I have to embed the image into my my uh, my Rust file, and then I have to do multi part, uh, for it to construct a multi part form, and I I I imported the Rust create uh HTTP pass, uh I mean uh some of the multi part uh, libraries in order to do that. So once I did that, I understand something. I understood that oh uh I need to handle the uh boundary. I need to know uh I need to set the correct content length. So all this knowledge is very, very valuable. So uh, which, you know, if you were to do a postman, uh, you, you just don't understand all this, right? It just works. So, uh, and then why, why, why is it so important to do this? Because the server, the, the developer may, use, may not use the correct, uh, as they, they, they may not use the standard uh, HTTP library, right, uh, to pass and uh, they, they the their server could have issue if the content line didn't match the the um the the boundary and it, they may not handle it properly. So if somebody were to set a a, a wrong content length as a HTTP header, the server may crash, right? So uh, all this is quite important in a way. Uh, in terms of um tech technical discussion, so I also participate actively um in the in the uh tech review because. Uh, one of the developer was saying something about you know not trusting the content length 
Yeah, so uh, you know, they are looking for some other ways to determine the length of the tile. But my knowledge of uh, multi-part uh, uh, helps me in uh, actually uh, having a, a constructive conversation with them, saying that you know, uh, if your content length is wrong, then the multi-part will fail. Yeah, so it's very simple to handle that. I think, yeah, in, in a way, it really, um, by, by going here, it, you really um, will be trained to be a better software tester. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, yeah. I, I, I quite a lot of time. Um, yeah. yeah I, th I think, thank you very much for, for replying all the, all the questions and a pretty interesting conversation and, and discussion about the project in general. So I know Sven that you had a question for Alan. It would be nice if we can move that to the end of the session, just because, uh, just to have some time for the, for the next topic. So thank you very much, Alan, for the presentation. Um, let's continue with the second one, which is about Kei Wasang, an introduction from Seyam um, uh, Sve. Thank you. Um, so we have not tested this before. So a short question, shall I start with the uh, screen share? So. I, I yeah, think sure. I just start with this uh, screen share and uh, then hand over to you when uh, it's time. Yep. Uh, I hope you can see my screen. Amazing. So, uh, yeah, we have a little intro to uh, K Wasm or Quasm. I uh, always say if you are, you are used to say kubectl, then it's k wasm. If you say kubectl, then it's quasm. So um, yeah, um, I have Sam with me. So uh, if you shortly want to introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, so I, hi, hello everyone. Um, I'm Sayam, um, field CTO at CIVO, CNCF ambassador, and you can find me on Twitter at the red Sayam Patak. And yeah, I have been doing a bunch of stuff and excited to be here presenting on KWAS. Yeah, hi, I'm Sven, lead developer at Liquid Reply, working and on cloud and uh, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, or whatever is the current buzzword, poly cloud. Uh, I already updated my profile to X, so uh, my X handle. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, not that easy to remember, but uh, you will find me. So uh, I start with the uh, bigger picture, and uh, I would say most of you already know the uh, stories about uh, Wasm and Kubernetes, so uh, maybe it's not uh, something new for you, but if somebody finds this on YouTube or somewhere else, uh, you have a frame uh, how we got there. So in the beginning, when server-side WebAssembly uh, started for me, there were a lot of articles like, will WebAssembly replace containers and so on. Um, in the end, uh, it doesn't. So containers uh, have not replaced virtual machines uh, and WebAssembly will not replace containers. So there is a use case for all of those technologies. And WebAssembly is a great extension for cloud native applications. So uh, the better together story also here on the uh, Kubernetes side. Uh, next uh, topic was um, Kubernetes isn't the ideal, ideal scheduler for WebAssembly. So we need something new. Um, my argumentation on this side is uh, maybe Kubernetes is not the right scheduler for you, but that's, it's not uh, part of the WASM stories. So if you don't need Kubernetes, you should not use Kubernetes. But if you are using Kubernetes, it's an proven scheduler and can work at very large scales. Uh, it's omnipresent, so you can go to any cloud provider and get a managed Kubernetes. So uh, you can find it uh, uh, out in the field at uh, many companies, and if you have the ability to run WebAssembly right there, you can run WebAssembly everywhere. And uh, WebAssembly containers can co be orchestrated with your tools you are using every day, like Argo CD, like uh, you can use it with service meshes. All those things you are familiar with and solve uh, common problems are just there, and you can use it as well. And companies that are right now using Kubernetes have with WebAssembly a path toward the future to uh, migrate step-by-step step their applications and are not forced to build something new on a greenfield application because the next cool new scheduler is out there. So you have an 
a stable migration path towards the future. And uh, yeah, my personal opinion, WASM will fuel the evolution of Kubernetes. So uh, Kubernetes can already run containers, virtual machines, and WebAssembly. We'll, we will show that in a minute. Uh, I'm pretty sure that OCI artifacts will definitely reduce the uh, needed bandwidth for uh, pulling then containers or just artifacts. And uh, it will reduce the uh, attack surface since you don't have all your Linux uh, tools in there and they are not outdated because you just don't have it in your images. And you can uh, increase the workload density uh, dramatically uh, uh, because of WebAssembly functions and the functions um, don't need to run if they are not invoked. So uh, that uh, will save a lot of uh, compute power and uh, a lot of costs in the end. And um, I'm pretty sure we will see more specialized Kubernetes distributions in the future uh, in the field of function as a service and um, WebAssembly. So short re reminder of the features of WebAssembly containers. So we starting uh, usually with a scratch container or even just with an OCI artifact. It's much smaller than a fully fledged Debian, than an Arch Linux, and even smaller than a distro-less uh, uh, container. So it's just empty in the beginning. Uh, WebAssembly uh, can run on different platforms without recompiling. The uh, compile ones run anywhere uh, paradigm. And uh, it's sandboxed. You could argue that a container is a sandbox as well, but only if it's properly configured. So uh, if you have a uh, container with uh, root uh, access, you can just go out of your container as you would have a door. So uh, WebAssembly has a sandbox and with the WebAssembly system interface, you have a clear defined interface where you uh, can set permissions before uh, runtime and uh, allow certain capabilities. Um, this is just to, to uh, see how uh, Kubernetes in, generally, uh, in general is starting containers. So uh, it's a little bit simplified. You have your container runtime interface, for example, container D or cryo. Um, the container itself is then started by an um, container, uh, OCI runtime like run C, C run or Yuki. And um, we have a shim in between that handles the communication between the container runtime interface and the OCI runtime. And the uh, OCI runtime then starts container. So let's zoom a little bit in and see what's happening with WebAssembly. I've taken this uh, to uh, OCI runtimes because they have an uh, interesting feature. They can be compiled with WebAssembly support. So you have a WebAssembly runtime. In this case, uh, see was an edge runtime as an example, and it's compiled into your OCI runtime and it's invoked instead of the classical uh, container workflow uh, when you meet certain criteria. Uh, for example, you have an entry point that ends on WASM or you need an uh, annotation. It depends a little bit on the runtime. But uh, the, I would say, modern or actually uh, mostly used way is to have a shim that directly has baked in the container runtime. So uh, in this case, we uh, have the example of the WASM Edge uh, shim again. So you can invoke with container D directly the WASM Edge shim. It's a shim with a uh, baked in runtime and uh, it can run uh, web, WebAssembly containers. Wasm Edge is a runtime that is um, on a pretty low abstraction level. So you can have a complete application with your complete uh, TCP uh, IP stack in there and uh, it serves uh, HTTP with a classical HTTP server like you would do without WebAssembly. Um, another um, alternative is the uh, spin runtime. It's a very uh, high abstraction level. So you only have a module with clear defined interfaces 
and you uh, just uh, write as a function, you get a uh, request in, you send a response out, and you don't have to care about all the layers uh, uh, um, you are uh, <laughs> you build on. Um, there are a lot, a lot five existing uh, containers. Uh, the low-level runtimes are in the container D uh, repository, the Runwasi repository. It's Wasm Time and uh, Wasm Edge. And the more high-level um, runtimes, uh, Spin, Spider Lightning, and the Wasm Worker Server. Uh, Angel, uh, I need an uh, icon for the Wasm Worker Server. So I did, didn't find one in the uh, repository. Um, are in the uh, Days Labs uh, container D Wasm Shim uh, repository. And you can already use them. So uh, with an actual Docker desktop, uh, you can use these Docker Shims and um, you can use also with Kubernetes, uh, namely Azure has the AKS preview for Wasi. And uh, there you can use uh, the container D shims already in product in production in preview, and um, yeah, work with that. Our idea was um, why only use them in these uh, environments, so uh, namely uh, Azure, and you should be able to use it on any cloud and on any Kubernetes. So. Um, what needs to be done to uh, make this uh, uh, happen? You just need to install the uh, runtime on the host machine and change your container D config. So in a nutshell, these are the uh, steps to uh, make this happen. And uh, unfortunately, you need to do it on all of your machines because um, yeah, <laughs> all your nodes need to be able to uh, do that. I guess that's the point where I hand over to you, Sayam. Yep. So uh, as uh, you know, Sven has described uh, this, we can stay on the same slide. Um, so the using the same tooling is pretty important because uh, the, the technology is something new and it is powering a lot of use cases. And we are already very used to the, especially in the cloud native ecosystem, we are very used to running Docker containers and building images using Docker, running Kubernetes clusters in production for uh, many, many years now. Uh, obviously, it makes sense to uh, do WebAssembly using the same tooling which we are using currently. And that is why Docker came into the picture. They had the preview of you know building uh, the WebAssembly modules as OCI artifacts and pushing that to the registry. Uh, then the Run Wazi Shims uh, project came into the picture where you have uh, Shims being worked on uh, and you can directly bake them onto the Kubernetes clusters. And that's what made it possible. Uh, so the Shim part uh, made it possible to run it on Kubernetes. And because there are many use cases where you would need your WebAssembly modules as serving your request and you will be having your databases running inside the containers. So you can have that on the same, uh, you know, same infrastructure. You don't have to create fancy infrastructures. You can use same tooling and you will be able to use WebAssembly. And as Sven mentioned, there is a lot of pain uh, as of today. Um, but there are solutions as well. So the, the pain is that you need uh, to be on the nodes. You need to download those shims. You need to change the container d.toml file. And based on different distributions, they are placed at different places. You need to restart those. You need to configure those. Uh, so th this is not uh, like this is doable, but this is the kind of, I would say, was on the hard way on Kubernetes. So that's how it is. But to simplify that, uh, that's where the new, uh, the project came into the picture, which is KWASM. So if you can move to the next slide, um, Sven. So that is KWASM, uh, an operator to do all the previous steps mentioned in an automated way. So that's that's in a very, you know, uh, very limited, uh, you know, but just one word, one line, um, what KWASM is, it's simply, you know, um, a operator that would be able to make your existing Kubernetes cluster wasm ready and ready to run your WebAssembly workloads. Um, I'll share my screen to show you a quick demo how it actually works. Oh, not this one. New share Chrome. Yep. 
So there's there's already a killer coda scenario for it, but uh, you know, just to show how easy it is, we'll do it from scratch. Um, so this is a regular Kubernetes playground, uh, which is on killer coda. It is free; anybody can use it. And this is Kvasm. Uh, by the way, yeah, wanted to let you know that uh, we have a new fancy logo for Kvasm now. <laughs> so uh, that is there. And let me install it, and I'll tell you like what all stuff is being worked on behind the scenes, what is happening. So we'll directly go to the quick start. It's a simple Helm install. So we'll do that. And we'll go here. And it should. So you can see KWASM operator is in container creating state. The next step is actually to annotate the node. Now, this is where the magic happens. As soon as you annotate any node with this, the uh, there will be a job that will be getting triggered onto that specific node and doing all the automation stuff for that specific node. And we'll come to that automation as well, like what, what it's actually doing. So you can see already the node control plane provisioner for uh, control plane has been created and also for the node one because we annotated both the nodes and this is actually a two node cluster. Yeah, I didn't show you, but it is actually a two node cluster. So you can see that. Um, and now what it is doing is it is doing like everything is mentioned in the Kvasm node installer. So this is the Kvasm node installer that is actually installing all the stuff. It is checking for the run times and uh, uh, you know, doing all the container d.config file changes and C run and whatnot. So all the things will be changed here. Um, it is also like it is putting, I can show you if it's completed. Yeah, it's completed. So if we go to cd slash uh, opt kvasm and bin, you'll be able to see the shims. So the shims had, have uh, automatically been created over here I mean, downloaded to the right places uh, and configured properly. If we see etc container D and config, we'll be able to see the runtimes being uh, configured because that's something that you have to configure for that as well. Uh, so you are now all set. It has based on the annotation. So in this case, I have annotated all the nodes, but you can annotate one of the worker nodes and make it a WebAssembly runnable node using kvasm and you can see how simply you were able to do it and we can quickly do a test so if this is the wasm test and spin test which is there so let's create so it's just creating a runtime class and creating a job so we can quickly run this as well and this should be container creating and running in some time and it completed and you can also see the logs for this and here it is so you have your webassembly node configured running the webassembly workload for you within a matter of minutes and interesting thing is if you go to the home page it is like almost able to run with the most popular Kubernetes distributions that people are used to run, you know, whether it's local, whether it's on cloud provider, uh, whether it's on managed Kubernetes. Uh, in the end, it is not like some managed Kubernetes do not give you access to the node so that you can SSH, but obviously Kubernetes has a concept of privileged containers that can help you with that. And that's what Sven was talking about when he talked about the sandbox so-called sandbox containers, which are not so sandbox when you run as privileged containers. Uh, so they are running. Uh, so Kvasm runs the privileged containers and that is able to download and configure all the binaries on the host uh, based on the distribution as well. So as of today, it is able to do it on a K3S cluster and a regular Kubernetes uh, uh, cluster as well. Um, yeah, over to you, Sven. Sure, so we have one last slide. Um, yeah, I uh, hope you can see it. So a uh, little outlook, what is next? So uh, on the uh, Quasum development side, so we have 
a few tiny things that are uh, we, that were requested from uh, some users. So one is a single runtime installer. So some uh, users don't want to have all the shims installed to test them, but they already have decided for one shim and want to have uh, exactly that shim installed. Uh, uh, that's a thing uh, we want to uh, do in the near uh, future. And another thing is uh, you have seen the available shims, but there are currently other shims under development. So uh, people can up with whatever, uh, uh, so whatever uh, shim they want to create and um, uh, Quasum should be in, uh, able to install it. And um, uh, the, I would say, most uh, interesting thing or uh, the, the uh, thing for, um, yeah, uh, which, which makes uh, Quasum a real manager of shims is the ability to enable, disable, and upgrade the shims uh, that, that you can do it, I would say, um, yeah, uh, explicit which version you are running and which version you want to run. Uh, for a shim that, that makes it, I would say, very more usable for uh, real-world use cases. On the runtime side, there are happening interesting things. So uh, we have now a static linked Wasm Edge shim. So uh, uh, Jorge, you are on the call. So thank, thank you for that. Uh, it really makes the uh, installation uh, easier. So uh, we have an, uh, very, a less error-prone process with that. Um, at the moment, while we are speaking, a um, uh, merge request for a default runtime on the Wasm Edge uh, shim is, um, I would say, uh, in review, uh, which enables hybrid pods, Wasm and Linux containers in the same pod, uh, which uh, makes it possible to run, for example, Dapper sidecars or in a service mesh, uh, which are common uh, Kubernetes integration patterns. Um, the uh, lib container, which is used in, uh, I would say, the, the um, lower level shims, uh, is about to be an able and shared feature for all of the uh, shims that are based on RunRuzzy, which is uh, very interesting for uh, the uh, future shim development. And uh, for the, I would say, uh, far, uh, more, more uh, far future, uh, container D's uh, Sandboxer API is uh, under development and uh, it opens up new possibilities to have, I would say, even uh, dense workload on uh, machines and uh, could be an interesting thing to look at. Um, yeah, uh, next steps for you. Visit uh, quasm.sh, uh, try it yourself. Uh, visit the killercoder.com uh, 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 playground and uh, yeah, get in touch with uh, the uh, operator and give feedback. Thank you. Rajas, you have raised your hand. Yeah, thanks for the great presentation, first of all. Uh, this is great. This looks good. Uh, I just had a question out of curiosity on. Yeah. There is some guidance on the images on which the nodes will run, like you know, to run Wasm workloads, like like what particular OS they should be, or is there some guidance on that? Uh, I would say uh, I have no guidance directly on that, um, but uh, there is uh, from the Run Wasm project there are some I would say good good practices. Uh, David? So WASM should run the same wherever, right? So I think we have some work to do there though. Um, for example, when when you're building one of these images that you would use with run WASI, um, you still have like the idea that it's, it's either going to be a Linux uh, image or it's going to be a Windows based image. And there's, there's, there's file system stuff there. Um, so there's, there's work to be done for us to remove the OS and the architecture dependencies and just create artifacts that in container D, we can load that artifact. It's completely divorced from operating system or architecture. And that the shim 
uh, understands how to lay out that file system so that WebAssembly can, we can put the WebAssembly into whatever OS and architecture that it needs, and it's just gonna execute, right? Um, so I, I think there's there's work for us to do there. We've started to work on that uh, with OCI artifacts in uh, WARG, in the uh, Bytecode Alliance registry program, uh, project. Uh, and then James uh, Sturvant uh, uh, at Microsoft has uh, started to put out uh, some videos. I think I think it might be in the uh, Slack channel for how Container D can take those artifacts, lay them down on a file system, and execute them. So I think we're going to see a lot of that work coming up in the future. And at that you're you're absolutely right. That's a really great question. Thank you. Then we have a question from uh, Joe. Uh, does uh, the uh, installer need to have root access uh, to change the uh, config? To change the config, maybe not, depends on the system, but at least to uh, restart container D, you need uh, the root permission. I have uh, not found something uh, to, to work around this with less permissions, but um, the uh, guys from namespace.so have an ex uh, extension mechanism where you can put binaries and configuration in an image and they are loading it from the image and uh, you can uh, modify the, their clusters at start time but it's not uh, a common thing um angel regarding the shim manager how are you approaching it will the operator track all the shims and apply the changes um I, uh, it, it, it's, I would say, not my primary idea. So uh, uh, kudos to, uh, uh, yeah, uh, David as well. So uh, the idea is to separate the uh, shims from the installer and re register them separately so that you register the shims and then you can uh, upgrade and downgrade from the registered shims. Um, what else? Uh, any more questions? Ben, thank you. Yeah, um, thank you very much, Sven and Seyam, for this great presentation, also the demo. It's super cool to see how it is to do things. I really enjoy this kind of project because it's it they basically lower the barrier the adoption barrier for different technologies and projects. So I think it's super cool to see how easy it is to run this. Um, the time that I saw the killer code stuff, it blew my mind. Like you made it in one day, like, hey, I just updated it and you have the killer code. Like that's that's amazing that you can point anyone basically to try it directly. So um, yeah, just to wrap up uh, the meeting, um, thank you very much everyone attending the meeting and also for the presenters, uh, speakers, questions, and everyone interested on the topic. It's again, it's really cool to see how uh, the community is growing and all the different projects that we bring together. The next meeting is in two weeks. So if you have anything you would like to share, any topic that you may think it's interesting, even you are not the primary speaker, feel free to drop all the information in the WhatsApp working group channel. Um, we will look uh, and we will try to, to get some people talking about that topic in case you are interested on. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's all. Thank you very much for attending and see you in two weeks. Thank you all. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you.